Well, what the Lord has just been really touching my heart, and it is tonight to throw to to throw over some sacred cows in our lives and get rid of traditional things that are hindering what God has already given us. And so this is a very important one. And so realizing that faith is in the now. Once we understand in our own life that faith is in the unseen, it's in the invisible, it's in the eternity, it is where there is no time. So we understand God, and, and God finished, then he begins. So God, God's word is finished in your life. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ Jesus, uh, uh, he did a complete work. He took the curse on him, and he took all your sins, past, present, and future sins, and he paid it in full, and he resurrected Christ Jesus did, and now you're in the kingdom of God if you're born again, but it is finished, God, Jesus said. So Jesus finished the work, so you have everything that's in the kingdom of God is already yours. And so what is our hindrances? And that's what I'm going to talk to you tonight about one of your hindrances that is a, that can be... A, it's a huge hindrance in, in our life. And when we say the words, so I'm going to go through it tonight. When we say the words, well, in God's timing, that is a hindrance. Because in the old covenant and in the new covenant, God said, don't say that anymore. Because your words are booting it into the future. And, you, and so... The faith is now. So now you put it into the future. Hope is in the future. And so you are postponing the, the work of God in your life. You are delaying it because you are saying that. So we're going to look at the book of Ezra and see what happened because they postponed the word of the Lord. And Jesus says this. In the Gospels, he said to the disciples, don't say the harvest is four months from now because it keeps it in the future. There's no faith in the future. Faith is now. All right? And so he said, no, look, the harvest is now. That's what Jesus was saying. And so how was they seeing it? In their in, the, in, in, in their heart, in the unseen, and that we don't look at what we see, we look at what we don't see. We look into the unseen, into the kingdom of God that's in us, and we see it already done. Am I, make, am I helping you right now to see this? And so this is what, uh, I'm just, I'm just going to go with this, and then we're going to go to Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. But, you know, when you learn to ride a bike, this is what you need to see here, all right? You used your conscious mind when you learned to ride a bike, right? But then one day, you knew how to ride that bike, and you never used your conscious mind again. Your subconscious took over. What's in your heart took over, and you began to ride that bike without thinking about it or catching a ball. Well, this is how it is in the kingdom. God gives you a word in your conscious mind. You say, yes, I received that word. Yes, God said that promise is mine. Yes, I received that. But then you, you begin to meditate on it. As you begin to see it uh, uh, already in the now, that's what you do. It gets into your subconscious. Once it gets into your subconscious, now you begin to dream the dream and you build a movie around that word that God's given you, but you see it done now and you begin to thank him and you praise him and you bless him. What has happened? Now, now it just goes forth in its power because it bypasses the natural mind, right? Isn't that when you drive a car, do you think about how you're getting home or do you just happen to get home? It bypasses your natural mind. Well, that's in the subconscious. That's in faith. In the subconscious, there is no time. And so you bypass your natural mind, the intellect that says, what if, what if, what about this, what about that, right? And you now 
the power that's in your subconscious, in your spirit, man, that just now goes forth and produces after its kind. But it's in the now. And so uh, so we're going to talk about that. Nazra, we see here that uh, God had spoken about Ezra and I and Isaiah 45 1 and 2 and Isaiah 44 uh, uh, was it uh, 44 28 and he talked about Isaiah prophesied about Z uh, uh, King Cy 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 Cyrus that would come along and that he was he was appointed of God to build the temple of God and this was like a hundred years before uh, he was even born. And so all of a sudden, he's reading the word of God with Jeremiah, and, and he sees his name in the word. And, it's, and so he says, oh my goodness, this is my destiny. This is what I'm to do. And so now, uh, verse 1, he begins to explain that and set that up. He was called to build the temple of God, to re stored. It had been destroyed. And so Ezra 1, 2 says this, thus says Cyrus, the king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of heaven has given me. I and he has commanded me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judea. So here we say, now is the time. This is the day. He says, now, okay, let's get every, all the supplies you need, all the people that need to go do this. Go to Jerusalem and now build the temple of God. So they get there. This is a rhema word. This is assignment of God. And this is also a picture of us. God gives us a word. God, we read in the word and we see by his stripes we were healed. We read in the word where he says, I became poor that you might be rich. We read in the word that he, he poured out his love in our heart by the Holy Ghost. We read in the word that this is the day of the Lord's favor. We read in the word that we get totally free of the curse. And now we're in the life of blessings. And it's now, it's finished now. Hallelujah. So he, so they go. And it says in, in uh, Ezra uh, 3.10, it says there, and then the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord. And they sang because it was done. And now they began to celebrate. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord. For he is good, they said, for his mercy endures forever towards Israel. Then all the people shouted with great shouts that when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Oh, there was great celebration. And so now, guess what? They, what happens? Ezra uh, chapter 4, verse 1, and several other verses here. He says, now, when the adversary, that's the enemy, right? Does the enemy come immediately to steal the word? Does he come to persecute you? Does he come at you with all force? Even though you have a word from God, even though you have the promises of God, yes, he does. Didn't Jesus say to the disciples, go to the other side? He spoke the word, and the word can't fail, but right in the midst of going to the other side, did not a, a, a storm, storm rise up that was a killer storm? The enemy will come at you with all force. And this is what happens. The adversary of Judah and Benjamin heard that the descendants of the capt captivities were building the temple of the Lord God of Israel. And then the people of the land tried to dis discourage the people of Judah. So now they speak words of discouragement, negative, and, and uh, discouraging them in their hearts. And they, they troubled them in building. And they hired counselors against them to frustrate them, their purpose, all the days of Cyrus, the king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, the king of Persia. What happened then? Right? What did the enemy want you to do? Quit. So they, what did they do? They said, well, it's just not God's timing. And they quit building. 
You know, thus the work of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, ceased. And it was discontinued until the year, the second year of the reign of Darkest King of Persia. They stopped doing what God called them to do because the force came against them. And they said, as you will read on, they said, it's just not God's timing. It's not his. I remember when we were in, the, in, in a building on Mesa Drive, and we had bought in this land, but we needed to sell that building to get into this land. We got our realtors. We did all the best marketing we could. We did everything. We prayed, but we but we kept saying out of our mouth, see, the power of life and death is in your tongue. We kept saying that, that a religious say, saying, that, that religion, oh, it's just not God's timing yet. It's not God's timing. So this went on year after year after year. Ah, and then the Lord spoke to us and said, stop saying that. You are postponing this. You, and so we repented because this is what we've been taught. And we said, okay, God, faith is in the now. This building's already sold now. We're already built our building. We're already living in our new building. And we begin to declare that and praise and thank God. And uh, guess what? In a week, the building, that building was sold. That was you stop and you go, okay, let's think about this. The story of Ezra is here. So they stopped building for 14 years. They did not build the temple. God said, it's time to build my temple. 14 years they didn't. They kept saying, oh, it's just not God's timing. And guess what? Then God raised up Haggai. Haggai. He raised up Zechariah. He raised up Ezekiel and began to prophesy to them that they are saying an untruth about God. God did not postpone it. They po postponed it. Wow. So let's go through this. This is very important. Oh, I got a lot of pages to cover here. So here comes Haggai after 14 years now. All right. And he said, thus says the Lord of hosts saying, this people say the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. See, they're saying it. Guess what? Your word has power. You have all authority. Your words will predict your tomorrow. What I say today will be what I have tomorrow. And so then the word of the Lord came to Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your panel houses and this temple lies in ruin? Because, see, they went on. They forgot the word of the Lord, and they went on to just go build their own houses and live their own lives. And he says to them, Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, but bring in little. See, when you put God in the future and you postpone, you can't seem to get ahead. It, 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 it keeps you from what God has said because you're not walking by faith. Faith is in the now, right? You're walking by sight. And he says, and so you eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you do not fill your, your, with drink. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. You, you have earned wages, but earned wages are put into bags with holes. That's because they postponed what God said by what they said. And he said, and so think about this. In the future, or not God's timing, is not faith words. Faith thinks is now already done. Faith words are done. See, we see it done because Jesus fulfilled it, didn't he? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying, remember I started off with the bike, and you get a word from the Lord, and you begin to meditate on it, and you begin to speak that word, and you say it's done now, then it gets, 
it gets uh, planted in your heart and you begin to see it and you begin to dream it. And then guess what? Now, hallelujah, what God says is already yours now is now it's finished in you and it will become flesh and dwell among you, manifested in you. And because you're living as though it's done now. All right. It was really interesting because we're in the process of selling our home. We're in the process of, of uh, buying another house and that, that God got, we just felt the life of God and said, this is your house. And then we are selling our home to get into that home. Okay. So we're in the home thing, right? But what are, what are we doing? We felt the life of God. It's God's will. Okay. So now what are we going to do? Well, dream the dream. We begin to see our furniture in that house. We, we walk by the, the, our, my vision board. You should have a vision board. And when God says something, you put that vision on there, and then you begin to dream the dream. And we see our furniture getting in there and being placed where it should be. And, w- and then we begin to see our house being emptied. We see somebody comes in and they say, this is my dream. We see our name off of our house now. We liked our house. It was a pleasure for us. It was a blessing. But now it's for somebody else. And so we see they come in and say, oh, my goodness, this is my dream. This is my heart. This is my, the, the, this house is it. So we see that. We see soul sign on, our, uh, on that. And so we see it's soul. It's done now. And so we're praising God, thanking God, blessing God, right? And, you know, it's so many things, like our calendar being full. So whatever it is, and guess what? So somebody says to me, uh, how's, I said, our house is sold. Well, who bought it? I said, well, God, God sold it. Is that a good confession or is it really sold? <laughs> oh, I'm not, they're not gonna try, they're, they're not gonna trip me up. I'm not getting into that one. It's sold. And that's all. It's done already. And I'm thanking and praising God for it. Because God said we're to sell it and, and move over there. And so, that's what it is. You don't postpone it. You don't change it. You don't say, okay, when is it going to happen? It's already done. And I'm not moving. Hallelujah. Our realtors that work with us, they say, you guys are very interesting to work with because every time we work with you, all hell comes against you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a miracle. But That's what the devil does. He comes to steal the word, persecute you. But I'm not living up here. I'm living from here. So I don't, I'm just done. I didn't know. I'm entered in faith, enters into the rest when you're in faith. And you bypass your natural mind and you see it done. And you keep it done and not put it back in hope. Hope is a good thing. Because, see, when God said, this is what you're to do, that's, that's hope. Now we take it into the now, done. Now we take in what God said. So you have to have hope to step into faith. Then you take that and bring it into the now, and now you put it in faith. Faith is a substance, what? Of things hoped for. Hope is what God said is yours. Faith is bringing it into the now. From the, Hope is always the future. And you take what's in the future that God said and bring it into the now. And it's a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. That's what faith is. So in faith, you get a word. And okay, that's that's in time. That word's in time. And then you step into the unseen where there is no time. And you bring that word into the unseen. And then you say, well, it's finished. It's done. I already got it. And it never fails because faith don't fail. Woo! Praise God. Wow. Okay. I I don't have much time. I got to keep going. So Ezekiel comes on the scene. Now remember, Haggai, Zechariah, and Ezekiel are now coming against the temple not being built. And Zeker says this, Son of man, what is this? Is verse tw- uh, chapter 12, verse 22. What is this proverb? This is saying that you people 
have about the land of Israel, which says the days are prolonged and the vision fails. And that word in the, in the Hebrew means this, postponed, postponed, prolonged. Or uh, vision fails, it means it's vanished, it's no more. The vision is no more. Oh my goodness. God speaks the word. It's there. So Ezekiel goes on to say 12, 23. Tell them, thus says the Lord God, I lay this proverb to rest. No more. Disappear. Eliminate. No more. Stop it. That's what he was saying. And that, that's the meaning of that word. They shall no more use this as a proverb in Israel. No more say not God's timing. That's what he was saying. Because he says, the day is at hand, it's right now, and fulfilled, and the fulfillment of every vision. And that word is now, not postponed, not in the future, but now. And so here we see this in the Old Testament. Ezekiel is prophesying to what they aren't doing. And 14 years later, it's still laying in rubbish. They're saying it's not God's time. God says this in 2 Corinthians 2, 2. He says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. In the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you now is the time of God's favor. When? Now. Tomorrow? In the future? Now. Now is what? The day of salvation. Now is it. Not in the future. Salvation of your relatives. You need to see it done now. You, you need to see your, your spouse. Maybe he's not saved. See them saved now. Now is it. Today is it. Seeing that. Believing that, seeing them pray, seeing them read the word, seeing them go into church, see it done now, not in the future. Your words will postpone what God has already done. Oh, my goodness. Is this helping you turn to your neighbor and say, this is good? Oh, I got three minutes. Okay. So. Ezra 25, 12, 25 says, but I, the Lord, will speak what I will. And I shall, and it shall be fulfilled without delay. For in your days, you rebellious people, that's what he called them, because they're, they're speaking contrary to God, to faith, to what God has. And he says, I will fulfill whatever I say, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. God says, do not say that anymore. Uh, God, God speaks and he does. So, now, John 14, 30, or 4, 34, we see Jesus saying the same things, and I said it earlier. What does he say? Do not say. Then there are still four months, and then comes the harvest. He say, don't look in the natural and say that, but look into the unseen. He says, behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes. Which eyes? Your eyes of your spirit, the eyes of the imagination, those eyes in the subconscious. Look up those eyes, right? God says, I, the God is light and he illuminates the eyes of our imagination, flooding them with light that you would experience the full revelation of God's, of, of God's hope for you, right? And so what is this? So Jesus says, lift up your eyes and look at the field, for they are already white for harvest. And Ephesians 1, uh, 1 11 says this, before you were even born, I, he gave us our destiny that we would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in his heart. So, oh my goodness, God gave you a destiny before you were even born. He already fulfilled your destiny and plan in his heart for you. It's already done in the unseen. He finished it. He finished it. Now we have to come into agreement. We need to see it done now. I need to see the race. You need to see the destiny, the race he called you to run. Done now. Done now. Because 
It takes a miracle to bring forth what God said he called you to do. And the devil is going to come at you at all force when you say yes and amen to what God called you to do. Don't be surprised. But, you know, once you dream it and see it and thank God for it and bless it, he's under your feet. He's doing his stuff, but you don't even know he's doing his stuff. Hallelujah. Entering into faith, the faith rest. Hallelujah. So he, he cle Ezekiel goes on to say, verse 27, Son of man, the Israelites are saying the vision he sees is many day, many years from now, and the prophecy about is a distance is in the distant future. And so Ezekiel uh, 12, 28 says, Therefore I say to them, this is what the Lord God says, none of my words will be delayed any longer. However, I, I say will be fulfilled. No more. And I like this then. Hallelujah. Ezra 6, 14 says this. Okay, now as 14 years have gone by, Haggai came at them with the prophetic word. Uh, uh, Ecclesia, uh, uh, boy, no, Ezekiel came at them, and, and Zechariah came at them and rebuked them for the things they're saying. And now what happens? Now the elders of the Jews built, and they prospered through the, the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, Zechariah, the son of Ida, and, and they built and finished it. What did they build and finish? The temple, according to the command of God of Israel, according to the command of Cyrus and other kings of Persia. Oh, my goodness. Do you see that? Did God want 14 years to happen before the, the temple was built? No. But once God said enough is enough, they changed their confession, and they got it done. Think of, oh, I need to be finished. I have so much. But I want God to touch your heart. I want you to realize it's done now. I want you to see it and dream it and visualize what God says you already have now and build something within you now and see it done now, and finished now, and put, get a vision chart, and begin to put those promises on there, begin to see them, begin to uh, dream them, begin to build a movie around them, and, and you build the faith in you, and praising and thanking him, and you get yourself out of the care and the worry of what you see, and begin to live by what you don't see. And praise God. I need to end them. So I had more to cover, but praise God. So, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we repent where we have used words when things aren't seeming to happen the way we think they should and the enemy comes against us and we postpone your words. We delay your words. We say it's not your time yet. And, uh, and we keep putting it in the future, and we've taken it out of the faith of being done right now and put it into, in, into hope where it just never seems to happen. It goes on year after year, and it's not you, God. And we say, well, God waits till the last minute. No, it's not you, God. It's the things that we say that are creating our tomorrow. So, God, we repent of that. We throw that sacred cow over. We get rid of that religious uh, uh, beliefs that is not your word. And we choose to be obedient to you. And we choose to see what you've said that is ours done now. And we choose to rejoice and thank you and praise you. We choose to, to build a vision around what you say. And we enter into the faith rest because we are rejoicing and praising you for what you already gave us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you don't know Jesus, we're going to pray right now. We pray, pray with me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And I ask your son Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Baptize me 
in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.